Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today we're going to be looking at how to speed up dynamics with proxies. Um, it's quite a really cool concept and it works really well. Um, so today we're going to be creating a chain link and we're going to basically simulate a dynamics. Um, and we're going to see the difference between a proxy and just uh, generic settings. Um, so firstly let's create our um, chain link which is a very simple object. I'm just going to grab all these objects that you need, uh, a sweep, circle and rectangle. With this rectangle I'm going to change it to 30 by 55, no specific number, just one that I've played with before and it works really well. The circle will be set to 5 and then we're going to drop both of these under to create a chain link. Now one of the most important things is, you can see quite clearly here, how dense the actual um, geometry of this is, yet it's just a very simple link. So first thing to do is to optimise it, because it is quite important when working with dynamics. The more segments and stuff you have, um, the more it's going to you know, take to calculate. So we're going to go down to intermediate points, I'm going to change the on the circle to uniform, I'm going to bring this down to maybe 2. Um, rectangle, we're going to leave it as adaptive, but we're going to increase the angle to maybe 12 and optimized. There we go. So as you can see, we can go quite far out before it starts to go all black. Um, and that's just basically saying all the lines are kind of crossing um, just from the distance just because we can't really see them. Um, so what we want to do is grab this and want to drop it into a cloner. And I'm going to reduce the size on the Y down to... Ooh, 44 just have a quick look at that making sure it's not touching because that is important I'm going to change the um, the H rotation to 90 so every other link will be rotated 90 degrees and what we're going to do I'm going to probably put on 40 links here um, and the reason I'm putting on 40 is because I want this to be really really dense and you know a lot of calculations going into this so once I've done that, I'm going to create the, the drop box, if you like, um, what's going to catch this. So I'm not going to make it too big, something like so. I'm going to make it editable. I'm going to chop off the top. And there we go. We have a object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the cube and go to simulation tags and just rip off this menu because we're going to be using it quite often. I'm going to give this a collider body and then I'm going to give the cloner a rigid body. So if we press play, you see we've got a rocket, which is not what we want. And the reason this is happening is because of, of the collision settings. Um, if I give you an example of what is actually happening, I'll create another cube. And this is technically what is happening. Um, an invisible barrier is being placed around this object. And because this chain link is actually intersecting um, this barrier, it's basically saying you can't be here, so you need to get out. And that's why it kind of ejects it out of its um, invisible um, object. Um, and that's why dynamics sometimes play up. Now, to fix this with stuff like this, where you have a hole in, inside something, you just go into the settings, you go to collision, and you change the shape to static mesh. And now you can see it allows this object to penetrate it now. Um, I'm not sure how the calculations are um, generated with the static mesh, um, but that's the one you would use for this type of object. Now, as you can see, our chain links are actually interacting as individual um, elements. And that's because over in the dynamics collision tag for the cloner, uh, for the chain link, you can see down here, individual elements is set to off. We just want to put this to all. And you can kind of see this is what we get and we get our chain links pretty much just exploding now and it's the same concept as before because all these links are actually intersecting each other and it's using an automatic shape it's not giving the most accurate shape so therefore it's just exploding so what we can do is change this to moving mesh which is where you get the somewhat accurate um, calculations so let's just pr press play and you can kind of see it's pretty fast but as soon as the chain starts to pile up on itself, it gets extremely slow. Um, and as you can see, the chain links are actually splitting. Um, and the reason this is doing this is because um, 
the moving mesh calculations are very low. Now to increase this, what you would do is press Ctrl D, go into Dynamics, go over to Expert and increase the steps per frame. This is how many calculations are going to occur per frame. Um, if we up this to something like 20 and press Play, one, it's going to be even more slower and we're going to get some different results. So as you can see, this is actually bunching up um, all together and then falling, which is completely not what we had before. So changing these settings do actually make a massive difference and you do have to play with them to get the best result. But as you can see, this is taking forever just to calculate um, and it's not very accurate. The only upside to this is the chain links are breaking now, which is kind of good because it's got more steps to calculate um, as it's been generated. Um, so I'm going to pause it here and go back. I'm going to change this back to 5 because there's a much easier way of doing this and that's with a proxy. So to simply make the proxy, it's very, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the rectangle because this is the core um, object of our chain links. And we want to make a proxy for each link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the cloner because we don't need to see it right now. And same with the cube. We just want to focus on this. I'm going to make one more cloner and I'm going to name this proxy. And I'm going to make a cylinder as well. Now the radius of the cylinder is important because it has to be the same as this circle. So this is 5, we want to change this radius to 5. The height is kind of irrelevant, although you don't really want a 200 centimetre because it's going to be really inaccurate. Um, what we're trying to accomplish is making the ring, um, but just very um, quickly. So I'm going to change the um, rotation segments to 8, so it's just a very, very low poly looking um, cylinder and that's what we need. So I'm going to drag and drop this into the proxy um, and then in the side of the proxy we're going to change the mode from linear to object and then we're going to drag in that rectangle that we duplicated. Now you can see it's not oriented in the correct orientation so go back to the cylinder and change this to plus Z and then go back to the proxy and there's some settings in here we need to um, fiddle around with. Um, the distribution needs to be changed to even, um, smooth rotation needs to be enabled, and we also want to increase the count so we don't have any gaps. 19 looks perfect. So once we've got this, we don't need to play with anything else because it's pretty much complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these and I'm going to hide them because we don't need to see that. I'm going to bring back our two other objects, press H to frame everything, go into the dynamics tag on the cloner, go into the shape and choose another object because we want another object to drive the calculations for the shape. So we want to drop in this proxy and now if we press play, let's just turn off the ground shadings, you can see it's a billion times faster and it doesn't actually fall apart. Um, even though the settings are still quite low, it doesn't fall apart which is just giving the calculations a lot more information on how um, the shape needs to be in order to calculate the um, the dynamics properly. Um, and it is very simple. You just take your object that you're creating and you want to create a proxy for that. Um, now if you're working on an object that doesn't involve splines, what you can do is for example, if it's this cube and it's got um, 44 segments, which is a lot, um, you wouldn't really use that, but let's just say you're working on this object. What you can do is go into whichever line you want, select it, and then go up to Tools, I think it is, no, it's under Mesh, Commands, and you want to use Edge to Spline, and that will give you the spline, um, and that's how you would, you know, basically make a proxy for a certain object. In this case, you would grab all the edges of the um, of this object and use that. So that's just a little tip there for you. Um, but if you did want to increase the accuracy of this even more, what you could do is go back into Control D under the settings and increase this even more, and then you will get 
a lot more accurate results. Um, sometimes the chain can be a little bit jittery. This can actually help relieve that. Um, also, you can see it's sliding around. That's to do with the actual settings and not the actual dynamics itself. So the settings do play a big part in this, such as the the mass, the forces, whether we've got gravity um, lifting this chain up, um, whether we have, I mean, you, you can include anything here. So if we went into, um, let's see, simulation, and we can use, I don't know, let's use a gravity. Um, and in these, we can stick this gravity in. Um, and then on the actual gravity, you can see if we press play, this is what's happening. Um, I believe if we make this negative, it may go up. No, it doesn't. Uh, I know there is a way to affect dynamics with this. Um, I haven't really used them, so this isn't really relevant. But you, you kind of get the idea that it can be affected with other dynamics and stuff like that. So... Um, I'm just kind of curious about the gra the gravity here. Uh, let's put it by force. Oh, there we go. So you can see that if we press play now, it's going to go up. Um, if we do minus 10, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. No, it's just going to fall really slowly. Um, and the reason this is falling slowly is simply because of the mass of the object. Um, so 40 looks a bit too much. What if we did 15? So 15 is quite a lot. So I think 10 or 11 would be ideal. So it's still a little bit. Let's do 12. There we go. So this chain is kind of staying put. It's got a little bit of gravity force. So maybe minus 11.5. We might need to be on the higher scale of this. And it looks like the 12 is the magic number. Hmm. There we go. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much what you can do. Um, and to make proxies a lot more simpler, I'll give you an example here. We'll do minus um, 25. We're just going to make it shoot up. Um, but before we do that, what we're going to do is make a cylinder. And we're going to reduce the radius. And this is how you would make a proxy for an object like this. Um, some simple objects like this don't really need proxies um, because static mesh um, is good enough. Um, however, what you would do is just give this a collider body. You would duplicate this cylinder, delete the tag, go into the collision change it to another object and then just put the duplicated cylinder in um, and that way when you hit play you can see this is what we get it's actually locked into place and this is um, you know being driven up which is really really cool um, I think if you drive the settings too high you can get um, really weird results like snapping so as you can see uh, because the pull is so intense the chain is actually snapping um, so you do want to kind of just watch out for stuff like that as you can see some of the chain did snap off a lot of it is staying in intact and what we could try do to uh, alleviate this we could go into the settings and increase this to 25 which is just going to give us a lot more information um, per frame in terms of calculations so as you can see it is now not snapping um, so you can do some really really cool stuff with this type of thing um, it's just really fun to play with um, and I best stop there before this tutorial gets too long um, but that is pretty much it so hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you guys if you've got any questions please leave them in the comment section below and if you're not a subscriber make sure you subscribe because it really does help and I will catch you guys in uh, another tutorial. So, peace.